Freaky fun for everyone, sold set. Leonardo, the Katana Blade. My cut. Attack the evil and humanoid, forcing him back into the earth. Hey, the name's Boglitz, you sold separately. We battle our human and skeletal each sold separately. You put the mountain together. Turn them into the light, and they change into even more powerful. Battle against Lion-O and the new Thundercat ally. Welcome back to another, another hey, hey guys, welcome back to another another episode of That New Toy Smell 2014. Uh, today on the show we've got, we've got Micro Machines, we've got uh, some Masters of the Universe uh, Matty Collector news, uh, we've got responding to your questions and, and, and comments and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Hello, hey, hey. Get in the shot. Hey. I'm trying to shoot this, get in the shot. <laughs> God, I caught you. From a little toy line with humble beginnings to becoming the leader in its own class, let's talk Micro Machines. During the mid 80s, toys ruled, and on top of any little boy's wish list were Micro Machines. And who do we owe the thanks for producing these toys? Well, Galoob, of course. But more on them later. For now, let's discuss the cars themselves. So starting in 1987, Galoob releases a few hot rod and city inspired cars, including some city services, European and military style cars, each being a miniature version of the already popular Hot Wheels or Matchbox cars already dominating the market. And to just get a comparison of the scale, this is a Matchbox car compared to a Micro Machine. As you can see, the Micro Machine cars are just about an inch big. And it would also be fair to mention that in 1987 they also did try to do a small line of aircrafts and boats just to kind of test out the market. With a very successful first year, Galoob drops in 1988 just more and more and more vehicles, planes and boats than it did the previous year. Not to mention the start of the playsets. And as you can see here, playset after playset after playset kept releasing until they finally came to something that would change everything, the Travel City set. Now what was cool about the mini sets were that you could get a mini set for about five to eight dollars and that you could combine them connecting each set to another so you could have like a hotel and a gas station and a police station and you can connect them and grow your city as you obtain more sets. Now the platforms also allowed the cars to drive off the playset onto your table or floor uh, so you can continue to play that way. Now in 1989, this was a breakout year. They had released hundreds and hundreds of new vehicles, including bigger and badder playsets. Now, as you've seen previously, they had the smaller cityscapes. They decided to expand the idea and make bigger cities, bigger playsets, massive transforming containers, and we also saw the introduction of the carrying cases and carrying cases play sets. Now with every year more and more vehicles and play sets coming out, Galoob came very close to bankruptcy. So in the early years from 90 to 93, they were just pushing out so many vehicles, so many sets that these are actually the years that are the most valuable of all because they are the hardest to find. Now with every year getting bigger and better, uh, 1991 introduced the new bonus license plates. Each vehicle blister pack included a bonus license plate placed within its own plastic bubble on the left hand side of the card. There were 51 in total to collect, one for every state in the United States plus one special plate for Washington DC. 
And with the collecting craze of the 90s, Gloop saw a chance that they could sell the same sets over and over and over to people who just had to have all 51 of those license plates, thus ultimately bringing them out of bankruptcy. Now with the cash running into their pockets again and the popularity of Micro Machines growing, they decided to try something new, licenses. The very first license they took on was the one melon from Marvel. With the success of the Marvel Melon, they also decided every year, along with introducing all their normal tons of cars and playsets, that they would continue on, including getting licenses for Indiana Jones, James Bond, Aliens, Predators, Terminator, and Men in Black, ultimately leading to the license that would doom them, Star Wars. To space with Star Wars. May the Force be with you. Star Wars Micro Machines. There's a cool adventure in every collection. Micro Machines Star Wars collections and vehicle collections, each sold separately. Hasbro, Mattel, and Gloob engage in a high-stakes bidding war for the rights to make toys based on Lucas's new films. Gloob eventually purchased the rights to make miniature toys for 20% of their current stock and $140 million against future royalties as the film's released. Hasbro obtained the rights for making all other toys. Now in 1996, with Lucasfilm re-releasing the original Star Wars films in theaters again, Gloop had a great year. But in 97, when the Star Wars movies were no longer in theaters, Gloop started losing money. 2.7 in the first year. The year after that, they have lost $5.1 million of revenues of only $70.3 million. Gloop stock, which almost hit $35 a share in 96, sank well below $6. Now with Gloop's company's financials in flames, Hasbro saw the opportunity to consolidate the Lucasfilm's licenses and take Gloop out of the picture, which was the number three biggest toy company directly below them. So, in 1999, Hasbro purchased Gloob. Hasbro purchased the company for only $220 million, far below its previous year's revenues. Hasbro stopped production of most of the car lines and continued on with the Star Wars lines, using the Micro Machines logo to, to help push the toy line further. And ultimately, this is where we see the end of this toy line. Hasbro takes the car and vehicles that they have left over and starts selling them in European markets. Now we know that Micro Machines had a lot of spin-offs and other sets that I didn't discuss here, but I only wanted to keep it to the original line because I, I feel like the rest of those lines can use their own videos. Now with this being the end, I can only leave you with the joy of this last commercial. Long live Micro Machines. The Micro Machine Man here presenting the genuine, original, colossally collectible, most midget miniature replicas of the real things, Micro Machines. Dramatically detailed, terrifically trimmed, precisely painted, stupendously styled, and smaller than a nut. This one or that one. Now look at our bigger, better collection of all new micro machines, including U.S. classics, Corvettes, Stockers, Convertibles, Formula Pro Circuit, and Rally Racers, Hot Bikes, Boats, Military Vehicles, and Construction Crews, plus a fabulous fleet of micro machine aircraft and fighter planes, and the new deluxe micro machines, each with doors, hoods, and trunks that really open and close, plus a seriously small series with outrageously oversized wheels. The micro machines, vehicles, and deluxe vehicles, the one and only original miniatures. Collect them, race them, trade them from Galoob. Remember, if it doesn't say micro machines, it's not the real thing. And there's the micro machines history story. Wow. Yeah, second. That was incredible. It was. It was informative. And comprehensive. And sometimes delightful. It makes me feel like a real man on the inside. I, I reminisced. So we do have a bunch of micro machines out here and a few knockoffs that get, that get mixed in. Because one of the problems that you always face with trying to collect micro machines nowadays is just the bevy of off-brands available as well. Um, and they're they're pretty convincing. I mean, at first glance, a lot of these you can't even tell there's a difference between them. Like some, like here's like an actual micro machine. You got your uh, Lamborghini, right? That's what all the women are looking for. Uh, but then you've got some here. See with the bigger tires there. This is the is this the Roadmasters? Is that what this one is? Road Champs. Road Champs. These are the Road Champs that have these bigger wheels. They look almost like a Matchbox. And essentially, car, right? they just did a bunch of big wheel trucks which there wasn't and then, many and then you've got these monster truck ones that almost all of yours are bent i've noticed for whatever reason uh because the tires these... stick out pretty far so they tend to bend on the spokes here actually this one's in pretty good shape you can see there how it's got these giant tires so compared to a micro machine 
you know, they have these giant crushing tires. But then also, Micro Machines, you know, they did airplanes. People mm -hmm. are used to that. We've got a couple of the play sets here. You can see here is this landing strip. We've got a military base. All of these could fit together. Um, but then they did some weird stuff after a while, like this little guy in a raft. And he's as big as a semi truck. Well, the Micro Machines had a lot of different lines. They had, you know, they, they started out with just the cars and then they went into doing rescue vehicles, which was really popular. And then they moved into military, which is sold very well. And then they somehow decided, hey, let's make planes and boats and, and cars and stuff like that. And they started making all that. And then after a while, eventually down the line, they started getting licenses. So that's why later down, uh, you know, after Hasbro grabs when you start seeing. Uh, Star there's, Wars and here's actually a Back Star to the Trek. Future, an actual Back to the Future DeLorean with the uh, time travel apparatus mm -hmm. on the back. That's pretty sweet. Now um, you were just talking about uh, Star Wars. Yep. With Micro Machines, there were they used the Micro Machines name and created Star Wars play sets and some toys. Uh, but then also in the last couple of years, there was another brand. I'm gonna move these out of the way. Another company started making little ones. I brought some of these. These are called Nano Speed. And uh, I just carry them around in my pocket, <laughs> just never, wherever I go. You never know when you, you know. Have I mean, because sometimes you just want to play. Uh, and these are—they have a pull back and go feature. Woo! If they don't crash into anything, they actually go pretty fast and pretty far. Uh, but you can see if I compare this, the Nano Speed with here, give me a regular car, Micro Machine. You can see that they are roughly the same size. Mm -hmm. uh, the wheels are a little bit bigger, and these do say Nano Speed on the bottom, so you can pick them out from a crowd but if you're looking for kind of that modern day you know remake of a micro machine these nano speeds uh, are actually pretty cool and you've got uh you know like food truck uh you've got a race car um off off-roader truck so i mean a lot of these i really like these and a lot of these nowadays they're cheap you can find them at like tuesday morning big lots uh, places like that, so you can get these uh, pretty decent cars. <clears throat> yeah, the only difference is the the way they feel. I mean, these are a little more plasticky, where the micro machines, machines are, are a little more metal. Yeah, metally. Is that a word? Metal. metal. I think you just they're more metal. Uh, they're 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 more docking, less Bon Jovi. <laughs> uh, police car. So anyway, what? Now, all of these are your personal collection of micro machines. Yeah, this is some of mine. Like I had a lot more. I just can't seem to find them right now because they're buried. But this is. I don't know what it is about micro machines, but I just like them. I remember playing with them often as a kid, so I decided that anytime I ever came across any that were either traded into the store or at a show somewhere, I was going to buy everything I found. So this little selection is, is probably just a maybe a quarter, and this is a lot here. This is over a hundred, I would say. So giant limousine. I tend to like limo? I like the emergency vehicles and the military ones more than. Uh, anything else. I really don't like the Star Trek and the Star Wars. Um, I think they're just kind of dumb. <laughs> hey, that's pretty hurtful. That, well, I mean, because for me, they're not marker machines. That's I put those into the Star Wars category or the, the Star Trek category, and I don't like them mixed in with the marker machines because while I appreciate those in their own right, I rather wish they wouldn't have used Micro Machines name on them and just sold them as its own separate thing. Like here's one, this is some sort of off-brand one. And if you look close, it looks like an actual Micro Machine. It's got the uh, trailer hitch uh, on the back for towing stuff, it looks like it. But the difference is, this one has an actual screw on the bottom, whereas um, a bona fide Micro Machine, it's like a, a slug. It's like a some sort of nail or, or flat end screw so you can't take it apart whereas this one has a screw stuck in there um, and if it wasn't for that screw I would look at this thing and say that this is probably uh, a micro machine um, and, that's, and that's the problem with this toy line during its, its heyday there is that it was selling so well just killing all the toy or the uh, die cast car uh, category that everybody decided to make knockoffs and they did I mean, I'm, unless, you know, I, unless Micro Machines actually had some of them with slugs, or maybe the slug ones are the fakes. I don't know. Maybe that's the knockoff one. So, I mean, if you, if you have any assortment of Micro Machines, you're going to have a couple of knockoffs. There are just that many of them out there. But I love them. I think they're cool. They don't I, take very much room. 
you know, you can have a cool little collection. The, the thing that, I, I don't like the planes as much. Yeah. Because the planes, in order to put the wheels on them, they had to put, like, all this funky, uh, like, thick plastic at the bottom in order to have a place to hold the wheels. So they look weird to me. You know, they don't look like an actual yeah, plane. Yeah, the, the planes should have been maybe a little bit bigger. Maybe, to, I mean, because, like, for instance, these two, in scale-wise, is a little more realistic. Whereas... You know, this is a, here's a jet, and you can see the how the scale is completely off. You know, I would think a jet's slightly bigger than a car. I maybe, maybe a little bit, or, or even this one. This is like a Starscream uh, type of uh, like F-16 fighter jet, and then you compare them to a car. Uh, I think he'd be a little bit bigger. Yeah, and that's the problem that the uh, the scale was starting to get a little weird throughout the line that. I think it that could be eventually why it died. I don't know. But uh, now these playsets, these are actually from the store. Someone came and traded these into our store. Did you ever have any of these playsets? I, as a kid? you know, when I was a kid, I did. Um, they were cheap. I mean, I think they cost like maybe five bucks. Uh, you know, back in the uh, late eighties, early nineties, when they were out, and they would connect to each other. Um, they have little grooves on the on the uh, play sets where you can connect them all, and, you, and I think there was at the time 30, 40 of them, and you can make a big city out of them. And that was the goal, was to you know collect enough of these little mini sets that you could build a full on city. Um, they also did have larger uh, kind of like transformer style sets that maybe look like a, a toolbox that would unfold into a car mechanic. Set. When I remember even Hot Wheels got in on it at one time where Hot Wheels had many play sets where it would look like a van and you would fold it open mm -hmm. uh, and it had like a little city in there and little tiny people but that was actually Hot Wheels uh, branded. That's a little different. So uh, I don't know. I, I like I mean I like these little cars. The one reason why again I like the nano speeds is because they have that pullback racing action so you can launch them off and <laughs> they, they come with play sets that have loops and jumps and you know, things like that. So, I, as far as I'm concerned, this is like the modern day, uh, you know, micro machine equivalent. Because um, a lot of these get beat up and chunked up. You had one of them here, yeah, where like the whole front end is like bitten off. Hey man, it goes to the, the junkyard when you're playing. <laughs> oh, I You see. can't have all pristine cars. Come on. Yeah, this is like one of my all time favorite toy lines. Um, and I still like it today. And some of, the, like this one here, if we take a look, uh, this one had movable parts, uh, so you can see like the door that flips open, like your uh, DeLorean type door flips open there. Um, it had you could open and see the engine, but now of course the cover is missing. In the back on the trunk, you could open and see inside, but of course that's missing. So some of these had the movable uh, parts to it. I remember playing with some of those uh, when I was. I remember being in high school and sitting in the back of the room in Latin class. And uh, I was sitting in one corner, and I had a friend that sat in the other corner, and there's a chalkboard across the back wall. So we'd take the micro machine and stick it in the uh, chalk tray, <laughs> zip it across, back and forth across the back of the classroom. In high school? In high school. I, I graduated in 94. So. Well, you were part of the super cool kid. Right? I, hey, I was taking Latin. And I mean, think of how cool, how cool does that make you to be in Latin class? So you were, here you are in Latin class, busting out, hey, guys. Let's bust out some micro Let's machines. Let's play micro machines. As a teenager. Well, I mean, I can't really say anything. I still play with these today, but I couldn't imagine playing with them in high school. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. That's a little beyond me. So anyway. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll take a quick break. All right, let's do some news. Let's do some news. Why? Let's do some news. Why? I want to know what's news. Why? You got to do the news so you can find out what's news. So what's news with you? Chilling. <laughs> chilling with killing? Chilling, chilling. That's our new show. Chilling All right, so killing. what do you got? Is there anything happening that's newsworthy? Okay, well, um, something I want to talk about real quick just because, uh, why not, is <laughs> that... Uh, <laughs> We have some more of a new kind of introduction to the Glio system, if you remember, from the uh, O'Neill Designs, right. the fun uh, independent toy. Mix and match. Mix line. and match thing. Um, 
This is from True Cast Studios, and just letting you know, The Walking Dud from uh, Walking Dud. The Walking Dud from uh, Marty the God Beast. Hanson. Hanson. Yeah. The uh, he released it uh, on the thirty first of uh, August, so it's out now. Uh, you can go to TrueCastStudios.com and purchase this, but. Uh, he has several versions of the walking, and this thing he's been. If you've been following him at any given time or going to the shows, he's been having this figure for a long time now, and he finally got him casted uh, using the O'Neill's factory in China, and now they're finally available for sale. He has variations of them. He has a, a see-through blue one that you can paint yourself. He has mm. pre-painted ones. He has them on card. Different variations of them, but something just cool and different for the Glio systems because. If you're familiar with the Glio systems, the, the, all the parts seem fairly close to the same style. This is something that's completely different but usable in the same line. Hmm. So I'll just put a little image up there so you can see what it looks like. And if you want one, just go to TrueCastStudios.com and help support independent toys. All right. Some of the uh, big news since we did the last show is um, the Masters of the Universe subscriptions for 2015 at Maddie Collector actually didn't make it. And so they had to go back and reopen subscriptions for another, I think it was like five days or whatever. Try to beef them up, try to get enough people to go in there and add more subscriptions so that they could go through. And amazingly enough, they were able to do it. Of With course. the extended time... They were able to get it, so the final Club Eternia will come out with Lizard Man, Ninja Warrior, Huntara, Club Exclusive Olar, and the rest of the mysterious lineup for 2015. Yeah, none of that sounded amazing to me. <laughs> <clears throat> I wonder, you know, I wonder when they say they don't make it, and everybody freaks out, and they say, well, we're going to open it for another week. I wonder what the sales look like in that week. I wonder if they've already made it, but they're just saying no, trying to get more people. I mean, they'll never, ever disclose that information, but I wonder if this is just a sales technique where they say it's not going to make it, and everybody freaks out, and they're like, oh, we got a week to make this happen, and people go back and order multiple subscriptions to help. I wonder if that's a situation that occurs, or if they just thought, oh, let's see what happens if we give another week and add on some more sales. What I think is interesting is, as of right now when we're filming this, and obviously we film this you know, a little bit ahead of time of when it goes live, um, but as of filming this, the Intergalactic New Adventure Skeletor is still available for sale. Castle Grayskull is still available for sale, not sold out. They still have uh, the classic He-Man, She-Ra, Battle Armor Skeletor, Hurricane um, Hordak, Bubble Power She-Ra, Battleground Tila, King Hiss, Stratos, Eternium Palace Guards 2-Pack, The Griffin, Battle Cat, Wind Raider, Weapons Pack, another Weapons Pack, another Weapons Pack are all still available on the site. So I know that they said some of the stuff like He-Man, She-Ra, Skeletor, they always wanted to make available. Uh, but to me, it's kind of interesting that the Hurricane Hordak, uh, Battleground Tila, those were in the um, Big Lots assortment of ones that they had mm -hmm. way too many of uh, that actually went out to uh, retail, and they're still available here on the site. Plus, Battleground Tila, they're still selling at $20, which was her original price. Uh, Stratos is still selling for $25, his original price. Uh, but now He-Man is being sold at the $27 current price point of course uh which is kind of funny there well you're gonna, they're gonna get that um, they, but the intergalactic skeletor is still being on there which i'm kind of glad because I, I, I i want one and i forgot about it but yeah. i'm still sitting there thinking like man that's 35 i know that's the problem like anything. i'm trying to find a, a reason something else to buy that i can kind of justify the cost but by itself it's a little harsh i did sign up for the subscriptions with the minis um and i signed up for it the, where at, when they're done with the minis in December, I'm just going to get them all in one shipment because I don't care enough that I have to have them right away to get them as they come out and pay the extra shipping for them. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have them because I like having the little figures and I like building the little Castle Grey Skull. So when it's all said and done in December, I'm going to get the rest of them in that one pack um, at the end. So I did go ahead and sign up for that. Yeah, I'm, see, I'm on the fence about buying them right now because I'm thinking, you know, they do that sell every year. Or a few times a year where right. everything's like half off, or whatever. And I got a feeling a lot of this stuff's going to be on there. You don't know. Well, like, what's going to happen Black Friday this year? <clears throat> yeah. They I, might have something special for I mean, Black Friday. You never Friday. know. They, it might not be, but given how it's worked in the past, I'm, I'm just going to wait. Now, they did announce at San Diego Comic Con that they are doing the Masters of the Universe Giants. So they are basically re releasing not the classics figures, but the vintage style Masters of the Universe figures. Uh, he Man, Skeletor, Beast Man, and is it Stratos? Is that the other one? 
uh, yeah, Beastman and Stratos, and they're being re-released as 12-inch figures, and it'll be four of them, and they're going to do one every month, September through December, and they're going to open the, uh, the window September 10th through the 25th for you to subscribe to get those four figures. Hmm. Now, let me ask you, a 12-inch vintage style Masters of the Universe He-Man, how much do you think that's going to cost? Well, based on their larger scale figures, 60. Actually, you're shooting a little low. <laughs> what? $75 a figure. Wow. So that's 75. Not only that, it's $75 for a figure, for one figure, one figure for four months, and it's the four months leading up to Christmas. So as if you didn't have enough to worry about buying presents for other people at Christmas time and all the other bills associated with the holidays, here they want to get you for three hundred dollars plus shipping for the four months leading up. To you know, and Christmas. the thing about that is, forget about the price point. Let's just let's just say that these are a special, you know, one deal things. It'd be cool to have, but it's not necessary. And it's completely like. They're Over twelve the inch expense. figures. Yeah. Like and you know, like, like having I don't know. I would like a big twelve inch skeletor maybe. And maybe a He Man. But there's no way I want a Stratos or whoever. Beast else. Man. Beast Man. Yeah, come on. I don't want those. But <clears throat> a He Man, like if you're a collector and you already got the line, you're definitely gonna want the He Man and Skeletor. It's just cool. You know, they just look cool. But I can't justify seventy five dollars, maybe for both seventy five. <laughs> I feel okay with that. But not each. But there's, and there's definitely no way I'm going to pay 75 for the other two. No way. Um, I don't know if we've seen any packaging. I, I wasn't able to find anything about the packaging. So I don't know if it's going to be on a two-scale blister card. Or if they're just going to be like in the white box, maybe with a window on it, you know, type as of deal. As far as, the, as being 12-inch figures like this, I don't care. Like, because I'd want them loose anyway. So they could put them in a Ziploc bag for all I care. Well, well, yeah, but price. a lot of people like to collect in the package. They're mint in box collectors. Yeah, but for that kind of a figure, eh. I mean, I'm a I'm a mint on card collector too, but that that type that's one of the few exceptions I can see out there where I really just don't care. Well, it's the part that, that that kind of bothers me about it is that they just announced them at San Diego, and they're going to hit you right now. San Diego is July, then September they're going to hit you for that subscription and your first seventy five. And then October, November, December, you're getting hit. So it's like it came out of nowhere. The line, they've announced this, that 2015 is going to be the last year for the line. And then, boom, they're hitting you right now, 300 bucks out of your pocket. You know, As opposed to, say, Castle Grayskull, which is $300 if you want to order it now. But they announced that like a year and a half before it actually came out. You know, So everybody could freak out about it for a long time before it actually came. So... They didn't really give you any head time, and they're just going to expect everybody to just shovel out some cash to pick up these figures. Yeah, it's kind of poor. Yeah, I guess in that sense it's poor planning. Like this is something they should wait till the line's gone and it release uh, as something to you know tie people over until their next big thing. Um, the timing is kind of rough, including the fact that they have all their other subscription stuff going on at the same time. And who knows what else they're going to throw out there right before Christmas? Yeah. All right. Too well. Much money couple other pieces of news, uh, and my mom is calling. I'll have to call her back later. Uh, so, sorry, Mom. Talk to you later. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so uh, Bandai has announced that they are bringing back the Tamagotchi again. Okay. Uh, this time it's going back to just the standard egg shape like it did when it originally launched. Mm -hmm. um, but now they have bump technology. So if you've got a Tamagotchi and I've got a Tamagotchi, we can bump them into each other. And they will trade some information back and forth. And you get, like, gifts or treats sent to each other and things like that. Huh? Huh? Well, if we <laughs> yeah, if we go to our slumber party and we are sitting there just, you know, hanging out or whatever, we bump them, that could be good for everybody. So, so is that considered bumping uglies? I just, on I your, just can't figure out any situation where this is, like, it works out to be cool. You're, you're uh, not cool. They are also releasing figures, actual figures and play sets of the Tamagotchi characters... 
as uh, what does that even mean? plastic. Like I don't even know. Like I, I like like Littlest Pet Shop. Imagine Littlest Pet Shop, but they are the Tamagotchi characters. So your digital character you have in your little egg, you could actually buy the figure of. No, I mean I get that. I just didn't know there was like named characters for Tamagotchi. Like I didn't know there was a thing. Oh, not only that, they they they're gonna have uh, online animated webisodes, games, character profiles, and more. Ooh, that's like stickers and posters. Each character will be three ninety nine. The character pack will have a unique accessory to play out each uh, personality, and those are going to be five ninety nine. So you can get the basic figure or the figure and an accessory. Well, at least they're cheap for an extra price. Uh, three different play sets. Now here's the thing. This is the sexism coming into games. This right here. It says three different play sets allow girls to recreate their favorite scenes from the Tamagotchi Friends webisodes. Uh, what if you're a dude that likes Tamagotchi? Yeah. Why Why is Bandai of America being so sexist and hateful? That's what I want to know. That's There's weird. your headline. Sexist, hateful Bandai. <laughs> All right. Well, how much are the Tamagotchi? Like, uh, 20 bucks. Ugh. But, I mean, that's, uh, you know. Uh, uh, why does everybody want so much money for everything? Because <laughs> things cost money. Like, a lot. I'm like, yeah, well, it, it, you know, like when someone trades a toy into a, a toy store and then someone turns around and sells it for a whole lot more money than what they pay for it. I just, I know, but this, I'm thinking about stuff that I may buy. I mean, I got, I got daughters. <laughs> you know, and they want, they want stuff like that, and I, I got to buy it. But I kind of would want good value. <laughs> So twenty dollars is rough. Well, but uh, you know, going into Christmas, I mean, it's not, but it is. I'm sure there'll be like a Black Friday deal where it's like two figures for twenty four dollars or something like that. So you're gonna get them for you know cheap, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, follow up a story that we talked about last time: the Capo Toys uh, Street Fighter Kickstarter. Uh, they have 54 days to go because they gave themselves a lot of time on this one. They <laughs> sure did. They made a goal of $550,000 to get these figures out there. And right Ooh. now, they have raised $12,091. So they've still got a ways to go in their 54 days. I mean, 54 days is a long time in Kickstarter time. So I'm not too worried about it. But, I mean, the goal they set themselves is pretty high. I'm wondering why they want to go that high. I'm, I'm just kind of like, they have pledge $1. And the pledge $1 says, thank you. You don't get anything for pledging a dollar, and five people have done it. Where they just say, well, you know, here, take a dollar. I just don't understand, like, in what, in, in, in you know, maybe I don't know production costs and, and tooling and, and licensing fees or whatever, but 550000 I mean, obviously the 50000 is for the 10% Kickstarter is going to take. But five hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money. I mean, maybe the Street Fighter license is just super expensive. Like I, I couldn't even imagine that's what a major toy company spends to put out one toy. And here they are putting out basically one figure. And they're going to ask for half a million dollars for it. That's insanity. Well, I mean, they they are trying to get five figures together. So, I mean, you know, I think a hundred thousand would have been a more realistic goal. Five fifty is. That's pushing it. Yeah. We'll see. All right. We'll see. We'll keep well, you updated on that one. <laughs> that, well, that's all we got for news right now. Um, but we do have some comments and questions um, because of our first episode. First thing I want to try here, uh, let's see if I can get this to work. If we can, no, nope, that's the wrong button. I'm, I'm trying Sorry. to get hold. Oh, thank, you. thank you, Cortana. Sorry. Uh, how do I just call? There we go. <laughs> how do I call? How do I make a phone call on my phone? Um, here we go. It's the first time he's used it. Okay. Let's see if we can get an answer. Hey, Scotty, this is Dirt and Killin' from That New Toy Smell. Hey, how are you guys? Well, we're calling because somebody wanted to know why you weren't on the show. What show? That New Toy Smell. <laughs> He's on the oh, show. I didn't know we were bringing it back until the other day when, when Danny was like, hey, we're bringing that back. I was like, when? He said, last Sunday. 
<laughs> so, there's a reason why you're going to film that a day that I'm not working. I'm in. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I, I texted you this morning, and I said, hey, we're filming today. Are you available? Right. And what did you tell me? I'm working. Well, see, that's why you're not on the show. you got to quit that job. Wait, hey, what if we come to your work? Yeah. What if we come to your work and we just film at your work? Yes. <laughs> yeah, if I can't come to you guys, you bring the show to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Scotty. Well, tell everybody at home hello. Hello, everybody. What are you guys? Uh, what are you guys doing this week? What's the uh, micro machines? The micro machines. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. You guys enjoy the day. You too. All right. Well, have fun at work. We'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, so that answers that question. Where is Scotty Cash? He's at work. He's at work. Okay. So that's why he couldn't be on the show. All right. <laughs> what a dork. Working a job. Making money. What are you doing? Uh, let's see. Um, Jay Tunes says, hey, great episode. Yeah, that was all right. All right, so there you go. Um... <laughs> we just set the bar too high. So Megatron Mosquito wants to know uh, why you didn't beat me with a chair for putting on the mask and having the beard sticking out of the bottom. That I mean, but I mean, if you look at him now, he did. I did shave up. the beard actually. He did shave up. I did trim the beard. He did look like a terrorist. But you know, what? let's let's look at it this way. Story wise, you know, times have been tough. He hadn't been on the show for a while. You know, he just got bummed out. So he got all hairy and crazy. Wait, but even when I was on the show before, I was living behind the dumpster at the old, uh, yeah, the so old location, eating cheeseburgers and eating and drinking the little wine bottles. Yeah, he's homeless. So, <laughs> would you expect a homeless person to be all like clean shaved? No. Huh. Now he's back into the money, getting the show and everything. He's all clean shaved. Goliath Angelus says about the turtles, toys, and action figures. Don't forget that they are toys to play with and not collectibles. What? That's the craziest thing now, ever. Now, I understand the, the kind of idea behind the logic of saying, well, these are meant to be toys. These are not. Like, these are mass market, right? Okay, okay these fine. are just These are mass market toys. They're going out there just so kids have something to buy and play with. These are not meant to be Look, a higher-end collector. I'm not really worried about kids, okay? I'm worried about myself. <laughs> and, and we only care about collectors. And everything, all the toys are collector toys to us. Aren't they? Well, I, here's my thing. is like I understand you're saying that they're meant to be toys for kids, but at the same time, that's no excuse for poor quality. I mean, I hate when someone says, well, it's just a toy. It doesn't have to be uh, articulated. Uh, it doesn't need to have paint applications. Well, that's kind of the point. You know, it's like you want to be able to play with it. You want it to look nice. You want to be able to, do, to display it. That's part of the fun of having the toys in the first place. And just saying, like, well, it's if you have two different lines, you've got a budget line, and an expensive line, you know, your $5 figure versus your $10 figure in the exact same line, yeah, then I understand. Like your dollar store toy right. versus... Yeah. Your, your, like those Man of Steel figures. We had the cheap ones with no, like, elbow and But knees, if you're paying, but, like, 10 plus, at least have decent paint. Come on. Yeah. So, I, I understand what you're saying, but it doesn't work when that's your only line, and it's a $10 uh, figure line. Uh, Zeno195 said, I miss the moment where you show us the figures and talk about them. Well, we took care of that this week. There you go. So, last week, because it was a big overview of Transformers, it just didn't really seem to work right. And plus, we were just coming back, and we were filming the skit and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, so it didn't it didn't fit on that one, but we will do it from time to time Deal with when it, it allows. Uh, Scott Neely, he says that he wants that new adventure Skeletor, that intergalactic one, mm -hmm. still available. Still um, but this is basically the problem he's had with the Classics line. He doesn't want Princess of Power characters. I want He-Man figures, not princess dolls. Oh, and wow. now there are some people like uh, that's a statement. Sunny Deadwood, intern Rick, skater die. If you remember that guy, <laughs> um, now he's the type of guy that wants every figure. If he can have every single one uh, from any He-Man, anything having to do with He-Man, New Adventures, whatever, he wants it, and he will sit there and and tell you that well, real collectors they're going to want every figure. But my point is... Why well, do you have to make the voice? Because <laughs> that's his voice. There are less people, though, that feel that way. There are a ton of people. You can sell him a He-Man. You can sell him a Skeletor. Uh, maybe a Hordak. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Beastman, Orko. You know, some of those key figures. But there are a lot fewer that want Bubble Power She-Ra. That want Castaspella. That want, 
you know, uh, those type of doll figures with uh, hair you can actually comb. You know, there are not as many I'm really, I'm really okay. torn on the whole Princess of Power thing anyways, because I, I think one of the main girls in a standard version, fine, but when you start going into, like, variations of the She-Ra and variations of any of the others, then that's, like, you're reaching. Frenzy and Laserbeak. Uh, got a little too excited about what you put in at the end of the last episode. <laughs> love dolls! Great show, glad you're back. I He's just way too excited for the love dolls. Hey, who's not um, excited about love dolls? They're for love. <laughs> Everybody loves love. Uh, the Skull Reviews says, glad to see the show back, guys. What's your thoughts on the Sideshow Collectibles 1-6 scale Marvel action figures? Previewed during the San Diego Comic-Con 2014 as well as the DC line. Uh, so what do you think about Sideshow Collectibles um, and think, the one six scale figures? I think all the, everything Sideshow makes is amazing. Like, it's if you see it in person, like at some of the shows they have display set up and you look at it, it all looks amazing. It all is very expensive. And, and for me, because I don't collect that scale, per se, um, I don't tend to buy them. And not to say I wouldn't take them as given to me, but um, I prefer the statue stuff versus the, like, the doll, basically it was called a doll, um, from Sideshow. So, it's amazing, looks great, it's pricey, which I guess justifies the quality, because it is a quality, you know, thing, is why it's so expensive. Um, it's just not for me. Yeah, that's my main concern with it, is just the price. It, it just price it's prices itself out of my range and, 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 and i think they look nice like i understand like you look but at, don't you don't you think looking at them that the price the quality justifies the price well yeah absolutely but it's the same way that uh a lamborghini justifies the price of a lamborghini i'm just not buying one yeah. you know what i mean well, if someone gave me a lamborghini great if someone gave me a hot toys figure great uh but it's just not anything that you know, I'm going to spend my money. I, on. I just, yeah, I got too much stuff, other things I want to buy, and that's basically the problem. If I wasn't buying anything else, I'd maybe go that route, but because I'm buying like, you know, everything, that I just can't do it. No. Uh, let's see. We have Jose Arturo Castillo, mm -hmm. um, and he says, I love the idea of showing behind the scenes of the new toy store killing. Mm -hmm. Another idea would be to cover your items on your online store. Nothing big, but maybe covering new items hitting the store. Um, probably for segment purposes, we'll do things like that in the future. Um, I, we've been saving. I've been saving all the things we shoot and film, all the footage, and later down the road, you know, after we have a couple under, episodes under our belt, you know, I may release, you know, bloopers and <laughs> behind the scenes stuff because. Some of it's pretty funny, and it's just, just not usable for the show, but uh, I'm saving it all just for you guys. Skirm123 says the idea for the, the collector's corner would be a great touch for the show. Tips on cleaning, displaying, buying figures, etc. Mm -hmm. Make it happen. It is. It's going to happen. Next episode, we'll have the first one. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, see, executive decision made right here, because... Uh, Never heard about that before. <laughs> you don't need to hear about it. Uh, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> there are several people that love that we brought the mask back. Uh, several people that hated that we brought the mask back. Um, for those of you that love it, great. Glad you uh, like it. For those of you that hate it, I'm sorry we ruined your life. Uh, there's really, you know, what do you, sorry. I mean, if you uh, just want to put your thumb up to the screen and don't look at his face and block <laughs> nobody him. Nobody home! Just block nobody him. home! Just block him. All right. All right, well, that's going to do it for those comments. Okay. Um, don't forget, if you want to leave us a voicemail message, you can call our 24-hour voicemail line. It's area code 217-953-4025. We actually got uh, several phone calls uh, since the first episode, but nobody left messages. What? It was just people going, is this number for real? Oh, holy crap, it's for real! And then they hang up. Like they thought it was a joke. No, this is an actual voicemail line. You can leave a message 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Area code 217-953-4025. If you're outside the United States, I guess you have to type the 1 or 01 before it or, or whatever. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it's legit. It's legit. And, so And, you know, feel free to cuss us out. <laughs> Those are always fun to listen to. I don't, you know, don't we won't play them on the air. Well, but, you, you can't know, play them, ahead. but... Yeah. You know, behind the scenes we'll laugh. Sure, why not? <laughs> so so, uh, so that was fun. I always love getting these notifications. We have voicemail, and then I listen to it, and I always hear, like, 
oh man, click, oh wow, click, or I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> Something creepy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so good stuff. Anything else uh, we got to throw out there this week? Uh, no, I think that's it for this uh, episode. We pretty much did everything we can do for this episode. We're going to move on to the next. Uh, as we stated before, guys, if you want to see a particular toy line or you want to us to add things to the show or you think it's a good idea, just go ahead and drop us a comment in the YouTube selection down here or just go to jointheforums.com and go through the post there that the toy smell and leave us a message and we will do our best or even do the call call in the voicemail and we'll do our best to uh, move the show along and progress it. It's a work in progress, but we're going to keep it going and we're going to stick to our schedule. All right, then. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.